I want to, you know, speaking of all of all the, the ebbs and flows of, of this year, I had an interesting conversation with another friend of mine and we were talking about unemployment. And he sent me a text and he said, I have a question to ask you man to man. And he said, how did it feel applying for unemployment? And I told him, I said, man, I'm not gonna lie, like it, it, it messed with my ego. You know, I had, I had a, an issue with it because I had always looked at, you know, I, I just didn't feel good about getting free money, quote unquote. And I had a conversation with a friend of mine and it was like, it's not free money. Like you pay into this, you pay your taxes, you have been a working man your entire adult life you got laid off. He said the reason why this is in its position is to help people like you who just got laid off from a job blindsided. Your right. life doesn't stop because you all of a sudden get laid off. So this yeah. gives you the opportunity to supplement some of your, your income while looking for other jobs. And, you know, but I, I had to get real with him and I told him, I was like, I'm, I, you know, I'm not gonna lie is that my pride definitely felt some type of way for a smooth month collecting unemployment checks. I was like, because am I, am I living off the system? Am I cheap? I, just, I, felt, I felt horrible about it. But at the end of the day is, at the beginning of this year, like those unemployment checks allowed us yeah, to, kept, kept to live. Rich. Like yeah. it, it allowed us to, to literally keep going because I don't know without those checks will we be sitting on our same couch right now recording this podcast. Mm. Like I really don't know. Yeah, because the bills keep coming. The rent still has to be paid. Like there's no like, oh, like you are laid off. So let me, let's stop all bills. That doesn't happen. So I think it's a wonderful system. And I, I do, think, do think it has a bad rep because there are so many people that work the system. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you can feel like, oh, wait, am I benefiting from this thing that I shouldn't be benefiting from? Especially, I mean, you know, we're minorities and like, that's, that's the rhetoric that we hear well, all the stereotype. time. Yeah. Yeah. And which is damaging. Because again, I think there are a lot of families out there who for real, for real, for real need it. And, um, yeah, I think it's okay. It's completely okay. Like your friend said, and I have patted on my heart to say it to you. You have paid into the system. You you have worked since college. It's not like yeah, I was working in college. Yeah, it's not like you you get, came out of I, not even college or it's not like you've never worked ever. For sure. And you're like, hey, could you, you, could you break some, me off something because some I don't want to work? Yeah. And that's the other thing. You were working the whole time. Like you were you were trying to figure out your entrepreneurial venture like you were you were and still looking for jobs yes like both trying to supplement something just to right. bring bring something in exactly and like it, you were working longer days than i was yep so that's real so for you to feel guilty about that is bizarre to me but but valid but, valid. but i think it's a it's a, it's a deeper conversation and specifically not just for men but for black men you know we have such a, a thing with, with pride mm -hmm. when it comes in, in the black community because unlike most counterparts is our pride is the one thing that can't be stripped from us mm -hmm. and if you look at you know, us navigating the world and, and obviously opportunities are much better than they were 50 years ago but even growing up is pride was the one thing that no one can take from you now you can't you can try to take my freedom you can you know try to do me wrong or you can put me in harder situations I got to work twice as hard to get half as far you can do all these things but when it comes to our pride specifically for black men that's the one thing that we have all control over that can't that can't it just can't be taken away from us mm -hmm. we we dictate that pride and so a lot of black men are very prideful and I'm one of those those men and and I have worked on letting my my pride go and I give you know big kudos to that to joy but also just having other conversations with with men and understanding that you know there's more for us from. yes then there's more for us to control and attain and our pride doesn't have to be the only thing because that we do have the ability and the skill set and the knowledge yeah. to create so many more things and that's not limited to just but pride. also pride isn't conditional like pride is 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 it comes from within right for sure. it shouldn't be controlled by what's happening outside of you like if you have pride you should have pride in who you are as a person and your values not like what you have to do to get by exactly but a lot of that is is tied and that's that's the ideal yeah. thinking behind it um, but our pride most times is not tied to that um it's a very deep seated feeling you know someone he had texted me that that question you know i told him i was like look man i i, I understand like i was in that exact same moment at the top of the year um, but i explained to him i was like you know you have to i was like don't let your pride get in the way 
of you living your life. And not in a way where you're just gonna be free, but I was like, you've worked every single day. And his big thing was, he's like, I've worked my entire life not to be a statistic, and I feel like this makes me a statistic. I said, no, that makes you the exact opposite of one, because you've been working since college, you got put in a position where you got laid off, and now you're looking for more work. I said, that's not a statistic. A statistic. You're, you're working, yeah. and you're continually looking for work, but in that interim, that gap, you still, you yeah. can't call your landlord and be like, hey, I got laid off, so rent, it's not coming until right. I get a job. Hey, Navient, <laughs> ah, I got laid off. I'm not paying you guys anymore. Right. Oh, utility company, you know what? The lights, <laughs> ah. Could you still I need you to keep those on, but yeah. I can't run you this check until I get a job. Yeah. Life doesn't work that way. And even then, it's not like unemployment is buku bucks. Like oh, hell no. Yeah, that's the other side of things. Like it really is just a minimal to to get by. It was it was genuinely I think twenty five percent of what I was bringing home. Yeah. And so we had to completely scale down and rework our budget and trim all the fat just to make sure that we could get by. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're out here living your best life no. with all this coin because it's not that. It literally is there to cover the essentials. Mm -hmm. And that's all that's, that's, all, it that's all it covers. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can still float and and look for for work but it was a it was an interesting conversation and i'm glad he had brought it up um, because it's real and there may be some of you right now who are battling that that same idea or that same issue and it may not just be related to unemployment but it could be something where your pride is, is getting in your way and you're like oh i can't take this job or i'm not going to do this because your pride is not going to to allow you to do so and there is a fine difference of, of it being you know your pride getting in the way and you deciding that this is not who you are so you're not going to do it uh, because i am a firm believer of knowing what you don't want to do and not doing it mm -hmm. because we can spend our entire lives working a job or dating someone because you're like oh well i just don't know if i can do better or this is what i'm supposed to do so i'm going to settle for this job you know, that is very different than you know you looking at an opportunity that could be beneficial for a long-term plan but because your pride is in your way and i'll use this example for me is when I took this gig at Boomerang, at my previous job, I was a small business executive for a multi-million dollar company, making grand decisions, You know, seeing what we were doing from a business perspective, talking about big picture plans, traveling across the United States, hosting these events. I had, I had a good job and, and, was, and was having fun while I was doing it and working with friends. Here I had this opportunity to work on a TV show and become a, an assistant. I went from having people deliver me lunch to going and picking up lunches and delivering it to people. Uh, you know how much pride that takes to swallow? I had people who worked under me. I told them what to do. And now here I am at the lowest point working for other people and they're telling me what they need and I had no choice but to go do it. That is a very humbling position to be in. But I can confidently say, you know, in these past five months since working on this project, I have met amazing people. It has opened new doors that wouldn't have opened previously. Mm -hmm. And now I have ideas on things that I want to push that can help from a creative angle, not just Love Jay's interest, but also personal interest of mine. Mm -hmm. But I had to be able to swallow that pride and say, I'm going to go work this assistant job because I've always wanted to work in TV and this will give me an opportunity to really see TV done from the bottom up. And now I can say that I've seen it from the, how the, the, the show was written to then being able to go on set and see an episode filmed to then be able to sit and edit and watch an editor and the director cut the film. Like I've seen all processes of TV and I've never seen that before. But it started with me being able to say I'm going to swallow my pride and have to put my entrepreneurial interest on pause to go learn something and deliver lunches to people. Yeah. Like that takes a lot. That's real. But you got to do it. You know, at 29 years old, you think I want to be delivering lunches to folks? Absolutely not. Hell no. And I get upset. You know, I don't get upset, but I remember in the process, I was like, oh, I'm not doing that. But guess what? I did it. And I still did it well. And because and it was I did worth it, it. And it was. And because I did it well, People saw that, oh, this man is is talented. And he's not, like, this is not his position. This is not his role. But I had to work a role for a few months to show people, like, okay, like, he's 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 more than just right. a production assistant. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a testimony. I like that. I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to be honest, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm trying to speak real. You know, somebody, somebody's going through it, you know, and I, and I get it. And I'm, I'm, I got a lot of pride. 
you know, Joy will tell you, my friends will tell me is that 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 there's a flex, and I have no issue sometimes hitting a flex. So, but you know, sometimes what's good is is you got to get flexed on too, mm -hmm. uh, and it, and it just brings you back in, in, into a position where you're like, okay, like I understand that, and life has its its ebbs and flows, and, mm -hmm. and this position will help me as I continue to move forward and and being able to see like, okay, like I know what it was like being you know on the heels of thirty. You know, doing something that yeah, it's college where you would have seen fresh out of college students yeah. doing people who are currently in college, 18, 19, are holding the same position I am at yeah. 29. But I can maneuver and move things differently because my mindset is vastly different than someone who's 19 years yeah. old. And for that, it's been beneficial. And now I get an opportunity to go back to set and see the finale shot. There, that's only happening because I was able to, because I, I, I swallowed my pride and did what was right. Uh, and I'm excited that more is going to come. I promise you that, that something good is going to come from, from this whole experience.